So it looks like Roadhog's time as the top tank has finally come to an end as the battle changes are now live. Alongside him follows Orisa, Sojourn, and Kirko all received nerfs as well. But if you guys enjoyed today's video or find any of this helpful, please leave a like and let's go ahead and hop right into these patch notes. The first tank we've got is Orisa. Her fortify health has been reduced from 125 to 75, meaning she now gets a reduced 50 health from her fortify. This is a big deal because Fortify really made her incredibly hard to deal with considering she took reduced damage plus she also gained a buff in health too. So it made her just really tanky, just incredibly hard to kill. And the last time they made a change like this with Ramatra, it made his sustain a lot better. So hopefully what this does is it'll make Orisa's sustain much worse because currently she's hard to kill, which is why, why the counterplay to her currently is to literally just ignore her and kill everyone else around her. So I'm liking this change, but let's go ahead and talk about the biggest one, Roadhog. So the impact damage from his hook has been reduced from 30 to five, which we know this patch was about making his one shot combo more ineffective. Um, they also changed the enemy final position distance from Roadhog from three meters to four meters. And this is good because of the effective damage range of his primary fire. It makes it harder in order to hit those one taps. Um, I also tested this with his right click and neither of those work. One shot damage or the one shot combo is effectively dead. Uh, as you can tell with the scrap gun, they've also changed the damage per pellet too, from 6.6 .6 to six. The recovery time uh, went from 0.85 to eight and the reload time reduced from 2 to 1.75. And I think this is because they, they gutted him so hard on everything else. They tried to compensate a little bit. This is why they also increased his max ammo count from 5 to 6. In the dev note, they claim that these changes aim to reduce the frustration of dying in one shot immediately after being hooked and pulled by a Roadhog. Chain hook is still a powerful utility to forcibly reposition enemy players so it will still often lead to eliminations. Its effectiveness will now be more dependent on the specific hero matchups and how the hook target is able to respond. Uh, so this is good because now you actually have time to respond after getting hooked, meaning that you can slide out with Sojourn, you can ice block, you can wraith, uh, you can do a bunch of different things to hopefully survive after being hooked. Now onto the next biggest issue that people had, Sojourn. So Sojourn has been running rampant for so long um, they didn't actually make the change that I think they should make. And I think this change really honestly isn't enough. What they've done is they've made it so the energy gain is no longer based on damage done by primary fire. The reason why this was an issue is because you could charge up your damage really fast by getting headshots. Um, and now that's no longer the case because each primary hit on an enemy will grant five energy regardless instead of the damage that it's done. Um, so getting one headshot was really valuable with the primary and now it's less valuable it's cut in half but the issue is that her time to kill and the fact that her railgun can still headshot makes her still very viable even though they did reduce the primary fire damage from 10 to 9. Um, i tested this and i believe it used to be five headshots and then a railgun headshot in order to kill someone now it's seven so it's just a two damage or two headshot difference um, and if you look in this clip right here, you can see that I'm still killing people pretty fast with Sojourn and even with the damage nerf and the headshot nerf. So um, I think that they really just need to get rid of her headshot multiplier and that will essentially fix all of the issues. I've said this in a video before, but uh, their response to this is that the energy gain adjustment will help smooth out Sojourn's average railgun charge time because it won't benefit as much from critical damage as I was saying earlier or damage boosting abilities such as mercy, which also makes sense. Uh, hitting armor targets or other sources of damage reduction will result in quicker energy gains than before. Previously, damage boost and critical damage had amplified effect on Sojourn since it reduced the time to build up the energy and lowered the threshold at which her railgun secondary fire became lethal. So meaning that it became more lethal in a shorter period of time. Uh, the reduction of primary fire damage will further slow this down as well. Yes, it will. The issue is that she's still going to be incredibly strong. They just need to get rid of her headshot multiplier. As much as I play Sojourn, I don't think she needs to have it. It's really not necessary for her to still be good. Hitting someone for 130 in the body is still really strong. So they just need to get rid of it, to be honest. And lastly, Kiriko also received another nerf. Seems like the new heroes are really either getting buffed or nerfed. 
Um, and what she received is recovery time increase from 0.85 to one second. This means that the time between healing that she can have on each target has been increased. What this is aimed to do is decrease her healing output. And I think that's because she already gained so much value from Suzu, her dueling capabilities, her survivability with Step, and obviously from Kitsune, which is one of the best ultimates in the game. Um, if you add all that together, plus make it so where she can keep everyone alive because her healing output is so crazy, then um, they felt the need to reduce that. Uh, I still don't think that's going to be enough to fix her, but hopefully it helps. Uh, the dev comment says, despite Kiriko's healing projectiles being slow moving in single target, her average healing output per match is higher than we'd like. We've seen players tend to get overly focused on maximizing her healing potential and use her primary fire for extended periods of time. Rather than reduce the amount of healing per projectile, which may lead to a feeling of locked onto focus of primary fire even more, we're increasing the recovery time before she can start firing off more healing projectiles. Increasing recovery time opens the opportunity to weave secondary kunai fire more freely. This is good because it does help the lower ranked players to not heal bot as much, um, but this will make her less effective when healing, uh, which could lead to someone getting bursted down sooner, which will also force out her Suzu more. So we'll see how this all plays out. Um, I do think that maybe the change that needs to be made is something with her Suzu, but hopefully the Kiriko change right now will be good enough. I know that next season, we've got a ton of incredible changes coming to season three. And I really hope that this is just kind of to hold us off for the next week and a half or so. And then we actually get a really huge balance for season three. But again, if you guys enjoyed today's video or found any of this information helpful, please consider leaving a like. And if you want to come back and see more Overwatch content, smash that sub button and I'll see you guys in the next video.